morning, everyone. This is Rob McDougall from Zang Financial here with your weekly economic update. Today is Monday, May 1st, 2023. So last week, we had a very economic, uh, very busy economic calendar. We're going to go over that. But before I even start, I just want to mention some news that hit just this morning, which I think is very good news for the macro economy, certainly for the banking system. First Republic, which is one of the three banks that were immediately in trouble uh, approximately two months ago when Silicon Valley Bank failed. First Republic was one of the banks that was on the ropes. It looks like looked like they were going to go under. Uh, then a collection of banks, eight U.S. banks, deposited $30 billion into the institution to keep it going um, approximately two months ago. First Republic, the stock had continued to lag and suffer last weekend. It was in a tailspin. And at the end of the week last week, the FDIC stepped in, took over First Republic, held an auction this weekend, all very quick, recent stuff, and it was awarded to J.P. Morgan. So as of this morning, J.P. Morgan will be taking over First Republic, which again is good news for the banking sector, I think, taking a problem player out of the mix uh, and given us sort of a template for my, what might happen for future bank failures, if there are larger ones, for some of the larger regional banks uh, that with heavy deposit issues. So that's the first uh, order of business today. Last week, we'll take a look at that economic data. There were a number of significant releases. I would say they were very much mixed, and Tuesday to lead it off was a microcosm of that. We had the April Consumer Confidence Report. That came in worse than expected. Uh, and on the same day, new home sales were surprisingly strong, and it's at the highest level, new home sales, that we've seen in over a year. So that was positive. Uh, then on Thursday, we got the biggest economic release of the week, which was the first quarter, uh, the estimate for the first quarter GDP growth for the U.S. The increase was 1.1% well below the consensus, which was 2.0, and the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank's estimate of 2.6%. Uh, that's a number we follow uh, almost on a weekly basis. So U.S. GDP growth, poor, relatively poor for the first quarter, coming in at 1.1%. But the one thing I will say, under the covers, uh, there was uh, the um, inventory build. There was a inventory build in the fourth quarter last year which assisted GDP growth. Um, GDP growth in the fourth quarter was 2.6%. Well, uh, that inventory, much of that was run off in the first quarter. So that created a headwind of close to a percent. It's called 0.8%, which otherwise would have led GDP growth of closer to 2%. So I would say the 1.1% headline number, a little bit misleading relative to the fourth quarter of last year. So uh, a couple of other indicators that came out last week that were important. On last Friday, we got the Employment Cost Index. This is a quarterly metric. Uh, simply shows that employment costs were up exactly as expected, 1.1% during the first quarter from the end of last year. So very much in line with consensus estimates and economists. Uh, also on Friday, we had personal income for the month of March. That was a little better than expected. It came in at a positive 0.3% increase, same as the month before, but it was slightly better than the 0.2% that was expected. Uh, the number that I liked on Friday, personal spending for March, zero. So it was flat over the prior month, and the prior month, uh, which was the month of February, was only up 0.1% after a large January increase of 2%. I say this is good. It's not great for GDP growth, but it is good in terms of inflationary uh, pressures. In terms of inflationary pressures, also on Friday, we got the PCE uh, prices for March. That came in exactly as expected, 0.1 versus 0.1 consensus. And likewise, PCE prices core for March came in at 0.3, exactly as expected. One thing I'll say about inflation, now the Federal Reserve, we're going to talk about the fact that they have a meeting this week and they'll have a rate increase announcement on Wednesday. Um, there's a lot of discussion, of course, about the, what the Fed's going to do going forward, particularly since inflation it remains high. And there's no question inflation remains high relative to what we got used to for a 15, 20-year period. 
But the reality is um, inflation, you know, like so many things in the U.S. economy, it takes a long time for pressures to build up and then for those issues to be unwound. So in terms of inflation, we have a very long period of below 2% PCE. We're running 4.5%, 5% right now. So many people look at that and um, they're um, challenged. They, they, they just think it's not coming down quick enough. So the point I would just make is that uh, inflation really didn't start until March of 2021. And if you look particularly at the CPI chart, on its way up, it peaked last June at 9.1%. It continues to come down. It's about 6% now, but it looks um, very symmetric. So same, uh, same pace going up as we are now seeing on the downside. So Inflation uh, appears most definitely to be heading in the right direction. And so, again, this week with the Federal Reserve, that is definitely going to be the focus. We'll see what they say and how comfortable they are with these PCE numbers. So in terms of GDP expectations now, let's fast forward to the second quarter, which we're into. Uh, The Atlanta Federal Reserve put their first expectation out last week. The expectation is second quarter GDP growth to grow at 1.7%. I would say coming off that 1.1% last quarter, even if you make the inventory adjustment, there's just no question the economy was decelerating during the quarter. So I'd have to say the Atlanta Fed's 1.7% expectation appears high at this point. Few other things from last week, and then we'll move on to this week's economic data. But inflation expectations down even further last week. We are down near the bottom of where this chart has been. We, we often show the 10 year inflation break even chart. That's the 10 year US Treasury yield minus tips, Treasury inflation protected securities. It is now down to 2.18%. So that's investors betting over the next 10 years inflation will average only 2.18%. Economic earn, or I should say S&P earnings, which um, people were very concerned about coming into the quarter. Expectations were year over year that uh, S&P earnings would be down 7.5% in the first quarter. Uh, The first quarter earnings now, we've got 53% of the S&P components that have released earnings. It's actually been very good. Uh, surprisingly good. 79% of the companies that have reported so far have beat expectations. So that's very solid. That's better than the five-year, better than the 10-year average. So that first quarter expectation, again, that was negative 7.5%. That is now down to a negative 3.7%. So not a great quarter, but certainly earnings uh, from S&P 500 companies, much better than expected for first quarter 2023. Now, in terms of how the markets reacted to all that information from last week, um, solid returns here in the U.S. S&P 500 was up almost a percent, 0.9. That was led by the NASDAQ, the U.S. was, uh, NASDAQ up 1.3%. So now on a year-to-date basis, uh, these are pretty strong numbers. S&P 500 is now up 9.2%, NASDAQ up nearly 17%. Last week for international stocks is pretty mixed, slightly negative. The MSCI All World XUS index, that was down 10 basis points, negative 0.1. Uh, but that was brought down the returns internationally, definitely uh, with the laggard China. China was down last week 1.5%. Uh, fixed income in the U.S., very strong week last week. The two year Treasury dropped 10 basis points, that's good. And the 10-year dropped 12 basis points. So the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index last week rose a very strong 0.83% and is now up 3.6% for the year. So some of the economic data this week, of course, I've already mentioned the first big activity, uh, and that's the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Uh, The expectation is there's an 86% chance built into the Fed Fund's future market that they're going to raise 25 basis points. The only real question is their commentary, uh, any changes they think they see in the economy, and then expectations for future rate increases. Uh, There's no question um, the discussion that we've heard from the Fed, Fed governors, uh, does not look like what we see in the marketplace. The Fed has continued to say, 
we're not at the top. We're not done tightening. Uh, that may change on Wednesday. The markets certainly believe it is going to change. So while there's an expectation, again, 86% chance that they raise 25 basis points, we're currently at 4.75 to 5%, raise that to 5 to 5.25%. But the expectations are very strong that the Fed has to start cutting, that the economy will slow as the year goes on. So the Fed funds future, the data point, the midpoint of expectations at the end of the year, Fed funds future at 4.3%. Right now, again, we're at 4.75 to 5. That's before the raise that we'll likely get on Wednesday. So the expectation is very strong. The consensus that the Fed's going to need to cut by nearly 100 basis points by the end of this year. So let's quickly go through a few other data points that will hit this week that I think that are important. ISM manufacturing. So in terms of the U.S. economy slowing, we've been showing this, we show this chart every month, but just been pointing out that this thing has ticked down almost every month and has been under 50 for the last six months. 50 is the cutoff line. Below 50 on this index is contraction. Above is expansion. And it has continued to be below 50 really since October of last year. And the expectation is for the April number that that's going to come in well below 50 at 46.8, which is a slight increase from March which is at 46.3. On Wednesday, we'll get the services counterpart to that ISM non-manufacturing index. This one's more important to me because the services index um, has held up much better than the manufacturing. So despite the manufacturing slumping really for the last year, services have held up really well until most recently. So last month, uh, we were down to uh, 51.2. Again, 50 is the cutoff, the demarcation between expansion and contraction. We came in at 51.2 last month. The expectation is for the month of April that will come in at 51.9. So not a lot of room there between expansion and contraction in the services segment. Uh, On Friday, uh, we'll wrap this up. Non-farm payrolls are expected. Um, The expectation for uh, new jobs being added in April 180,000, that's well below what we saw in March was 236 and significantly below what the trailing 12-month level is. So it does look like uh, the economy slowed in the first quarter and it looks like uh, hiring is um, also starting to tail off. And the last one that we'll look at, the average hourly earnings, that will be for April, that will be reported on Friday as well. Of course, this is an important metric uh, for the Um, For inflation metrics, the expectation is that we will see uh, an increase in average hourly earnings of 0.3%. That's the expectation, and that's exactly what it was in March, positive 0.3%. So that's it. Very busy week in terms of economics. Uh, I do thank you for dialing and tuning into this. Uh, We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. (music) 